So what we're going to do now is present you with some additional variables. You simply need to identify again whether they exist on a nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio scale. Again, record your answers to these. It's going to be important that you're able to submit these in the online quiz. In fact, these are going to be items 6 through 10 on the online quiz, just like the other answers were items 1 through 5. Okay, so let's think about some different variables. Let's say it's the end of the semester and you're doing course evaluations. So you can think about all of the different questions that are typically asked on the course evaluations in your psychology class. Okay, there's a number of different statements on there and you're asked whether or not you agree with the statements. You ask on the scale of 1 to 5 how representative this item is of the course that you just took. So course evaluations are on what type of scale? Nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio? A second one that's relevant to you guys is grade point average. So think about how grade point average is measured. It, does this exist on a nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio scale? Third, think about Greek affiliation. Does this exist on a nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio scale? And by Greek affiliation, what I mean is either unaffiliated or the name of the fraternity or sorority to which you belong. So that would be your value on this variable. For the variable of Greek affiliation, any individual's value is the name of the organization to which they belong or an independent or unaffiliated. Next you can think about class standing and here I simply mean freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. What type of measurement scale is class standing? Finally think about the number of people you've dated since you've been here at Miami so the number of dating partners. Is this something that's going to be measured on a nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio scale? I'll give you a minute to look these over and make sure you have an answer for each one. And now we can conclude the lecture. The last thing I want to point out are the different types of measures. I'm going to let you guys look these over um, on page 66, these are summarized in chapter 3 of Jackson, and she gives a little bit of discussion about these as well. I'm not going to just sit here and read this table to you, okay? And a lot of these different types of measures are things that we're going to be investigating as well. It's important to point it out here because a lot of times people focus or commonly think about one specific type of measure, like a self-report that you guys looked at last week. But there are even different types of self-report that Jackson talks about as well. In addition, we're going to be using other types of measures as well, commonly things like tests like ability, personality, or IQ tests that I mentioned earlier. These are used very often by psychologists. Anything where we observe and record behavior, so a lot of the things in our example from earlier okay, are going to involve behavioral measures as well. So things like the reaction time okay, and the number of errors, those are going to be behavioral measurements. Finally, there's physical measurements as well. Okay, we can look at, uh, uh, for example, heart rate and some of these other things that I mentioned earlier as measures of anxiety. So we could think about a way to measure a construct such as anxiety and oper operationally define this construct using a number of different types of measures. We could ask people to self-report how many times they felt anxious or nervous over the past week. We could give them some sort of standardized personality test that measures anxiety. We could do some sort of behavioral measurement and look at whether or not they exhibit certain anxious behaviors. Or we could take physical measurements, again, such as uh, in addition to EEG and some of the things listed here, things like heart rate perspiration, okay, which is a, a GSR, a skin conductance response, okay, and try and measure some of these things through physical measurement as well. So these are things, again, just to be aware of. They're not going to be the most critical things in terms of determining what types of uh, um, classifications we make for the variables. So that actually concludes the first part of this unit on variables and measurement. In the second part, we'll look at issues of reliability and validity that Jackson brings up at the conclusion of the second half of, of Chapter 3. 
So you should now be prepared to transfer the answers that you had for the variable identification slides that we showed earlier onto the online quiz that matches up with this lecture in NECA.